Right, morning, Mr. Sykes. So, um, how impressed are you with this new sort of look layout? You see my logos on here. Look at this little ticker tape thing along the Good bottom. Morning. How Good cool morning, is that? And thank you for setting this up. I feel like I'm on a, a proper TV studio. Do you? Watch yeah. this then. Look, it's <laughs> us. How cool is that? Let's get that down because I've covered up half of you. I am right. amused with that. Well, I let's know. see. <laughs> Mr. Sykes, thank you very much for joining me on this. Um, just seeing that both of us have been getting lots of questions from the girls, perfectly understandably, in this incredibly uncertain world about UCAS and how things are going to work and what we know and what we don't know. And I thought the girls might really like it if we just went through really that structure. So um, what do we know at the moment about results day, how all of this is going to work, what universities are saying, um, what don't we know yet mm -hmm. about all of this? And I'd really just sort of like to go over again what sort of wriggle room the girls have got. So if they want to change their mind on things, how long do they actually have to do that? So um, should we just start off with things we know for definite? So um, results day, for instance, that's something Results Day is when it traditionally is. This year it's on the 13th of August, Thursday the 13th of August. Results will be released by Tormeet at 8 a.m. on Thursday the 13th of August. Um, and from that point, the system works as it ordinarily does. So clearing will open on Thursday. Um, most of you should get your confirmed or insurance place confirmed on track um, from around 8 a.m. on the 13th. So the vast majority of you will have either your firm or insurance place confirmed um, by the middle of the morning. So that that is actually all as it usually mm -hmm. usually is, isn't yes. it? Um, so eight o'clock in the morning, the girls are pretty, pretty well going to know where they are. The vast majority of them will get their places because they'll have made their grades and um uh, a few of them may have missed that grade and if a uni's not been kind they may then be in something called clearing so that's nothing nothing unusual there at all okay um we'll come back later and we'll talk about clearing i think Okay. Um, things we're not so sure about, though, there's been quite a lot of talk in the press about an appeals process. Um, if people have missed their grades or, or they think that the grade they've, they've got is not reasonable, what, what do we know about that appeals process? Um, some of the final details are still being worked out, but at the moment, it's a very technical basis on which you can appeal. Um, it will be an appeal based on the data submitted by Tormead um, and whether that was a fair representation of the students' um, potential and assessment so far. Um, probably more likely to be successful if you are unhappy with your grade is to think about an autumn exam. Um, mm. The dates of those haven't been released yet. The last thing I heard was that they were trying to schedule them in October. So they may they may also be in November. We haven't got any dates yet. So um, if you were to do that, though, does that necessarily mean you're going to have to take a gap year? Or do we know anything about universities starting later in those circumstances? I think all of those questions depend very much on the university itself. So each university may have a slightly different policy. Some universities may have January starts in this forthcoming academic year. Some yeah. universities may hold the place pending the result of the autumn exams. It's going to it's going to differ from university to university. I think that's a phone call 
on the 13th of August to the university if, if you find yourself in that situation. But I must stress, this traditionally only affects um, four to six girls in each cohort, in each year group. So oh, the that, vast majority of you will be fine. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if that. Um, other things that have been over the press as well is what the university experience is actually going to be like. So we've seen Cambridge saying, for instance, that their lectures are going to be delivered online or that that's what they think at the moment. So what what does that mean then in practical terms for that university experience? Does that mean people are staying at home, do we think? Not necessarily. Um, I think large scale lectures will be difficult for universities to schedule. However, that doesn't mean that small, smaller scale tutorial groups can't meet. Um, it also doesn't mean that they can't, um, you can't have things like picnics, you can't have limited social exchanges at university so i don't think it means staying at home over a laptop i think there probably will be some kind of social distancing restrictions perhaps the distance will be changed um, as a result of government advice but i think there will be some aspects of uh, of the social experience at university in the autumn but not i don't think it will be the full no. um, pre-covid 19 experience freshers week surely to goodness would have to have some um adapting yes there'll be less tomfoolery than traditionally is the case or, or in smaller groups yes or whatever yeah so have you heard of any universities at all saying we are not open to students until january or have you heard anyone saying no not not so far and i like you i keep an eye on the um news sites um, every day and I haven't heard anything along those lines yet. I think that they're very keen to get you there because of the financial implications of yes. um, large numbers of people not attending university. Yes and, and as well I mean because that's what they're there for isn't it you know much like we as teachers really we don't want to be teaching remotely we want our students there physically with us and a university will be exactly the same as well sure. that, that's what they want so they will be doing that as soon as it is safe. Um, mm. If, though, again, there's been much talk in the press about a fair number of students wanting to defer entry, and I know some of, some of our girls have been asking about that. Um, what, what, what are the key deadlines on all of this? So, so it is still quite uncertain what the university experience will be. So how long have the girls actually got before they can make a decision on going to university this year? Once the girls get their results on the 13th um, and they get their firm and insurance offer, then they are going to university in mid-September to, to early October. However, um, it is possible to withdraw your application from um, results day until approximately mid-September. I've certainly I've certainly experienced Tormead girls withdrawing from university in September, mid to late September, and then reapplying in next year's cycle. So doing exactly the same mm -hmm. as we did last year, but, but in the following year. And uh, Mrs. Williams and I are very much here to support you doing that um, if, if that's what you want to do. So if anyone is worried um, uh, and thinking, goodness, actually, I really want to know what it is I'm signing up here for. And, and you know, that that's very reasonable. Then the girls have got a really long time before they actually need to commit to anything. And also there's the um, option of requesting a deferral. So if you, if you meet the conditions of your offer, um, you can ask the universities if they'll defer. I think that's going to be very much an individual, possibly even department issue uh, or decision 
because um, if too many students defer, then that's going to have quite severe implications for universities. But it's certainly, if, if that's what you want to do, it's worth a phone call to your university um, and asking for a deferral. So if someone thinks they might want to defer, are they better doing that sooner rather than later? I, th I think sooner rather than later. I think as soon as you possibly can. Now, I know some of the current upper sixth um, were planning to make those phone calls. We haven't had any, or I haven't had any updates on decisions on those. If you do get any decisions, either positive or negative, please let us know so we can get a, a, an overall picture. Um, but yeah, I think certainly ring the university ask for a deferral um, and see what their response is, if, that, if that's what you want to do, obviously. So if you're sure you want to defer, do it sooner rather than later. Yeah, if, we'll do it from, from the end of this video broadcast. Yeah. If you are not sure, then, um, you know, time is on your side. That's the really key message here, isn't it? That, and I think um, that will unfold in the coming months. We don't know how mm -hmm. things will change. Things changed as a result of this week's update. Um, yeah. There may well be further uh, modifications. Yeah, but at any point through to mid-September and possibly even beyond that, actually, if you just think, goodness, no, no, this isn't what I want to do. You, you literally just withdraw at that yeah. point. Don't you? And then you become what's known as a post-qualification applicant, i.e. you have your um, A-level grades and then you can target your application much more closely because you can say you can make one or two ambitious choices, one or two safe choices, um, and you're going to get a decision much more quickly. The only thing I think we might or you might want to bear in mind is perhaps the competition is going to be greater next year with yes. a number of, of students doing what we're what we're discussing now. Yeah and uh, that may me that may be another reason why universities are possibly going to be less keen on on giving deferrals to their yeah. offers because but what you know why would they? They actually want students this year, don't they? Yeah, for yeah. all sorts of reasons. But I think, um, to me, it's a really key message. The girls often think that the minute they've accepted their firm and their insurance choice, that's very committing, and actually it isn't. Hmm. It isn't. So if you want to turn those down, you've got to leave the whole UCAS cycle. That's, that's certainly true. But, but you are not actually committing to go to university this September. Absolutely, yeah. You, you, you can't be forced. You can't be frog marched to university. No. So if it's not what you want to do um, and, there, and there are no other places that you want to apply for, you want to apply in the next cycle, yeah, you can just withdraw from the whole system. There is a, there's an option on track to do that. Mm, okay. Um, now, every year, Mr Sykes, we produce a booklet for the girls called Just In Case. Um, and we're going to be doing the same again this year. We're just waiting a little bit because, again, um, we just want to be sure that all the information in it is as absolutely up to date as possible. Um, but this booklet prepares those very few girls um, who don't meet the terms of their offer and uh, therefore have no place. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing the same again this year. Um, if if we were in school in person with the girls in, we would be saying, please, please, please read this booklet. The more prepared you are for something not going quite to plan on results day, the better it is. Um, yeah. I assume you agree with me that our advice on that still stands. Absolutely. So um, something to bear in mind, if you are in clearing, make sure you've read your personal statement, make sure you've had a look at the courses that you applied for but chose not to accept as your firm and insurance. They're often a very good place to start in clearing because having given you an offer once, they may be more open to giving you an offer through clearing, provided they've got vacancies, of course. Um, and then draw up a short list that includes those um, with any other institutions and courses you think you might be interested in if that happens on results day. Yeah, so um, we will send this booklet round when it is sensible to do so, when we're pretty sure that the information in it is um, 
as firm as it's going to be. Um, the girls, though, as we've said before, shouldn't be too worried about this. It's a very small number each year, isn't it? And I think almost without exception, girls that have found places through clearing um, actually think that turns out to be one of the best things that's happened to them, in fact. Yeah, we normally have old girls who've, who've done just that, come back and talk to us um, on the um, results day briefing. And every single one of them says it, it's really been a, a good use of my three years. I made the right choice. I remember being in the situation. I remember being unsure, but I've had a fantastic time at Sheffield or York or Kent or wherever they got their Mine place through clearing. That's somewhere where lots of yeah. people went. Um, and um, yeah. and um, clearing is very much um, about 20% of students get their places through clearing. So it's changed over the last five or 10 years. It's certainly um, a very viable option and there are some really great co courses in clearing. Yeah. So um, it really is something to have a, have a look at. There's a very good UCAS um, clearing video on the UCAS site. Um, so normally we, we would play that to you. We will send you the link, but if for any reason you wanted to look at that um, after this broadcast, I'd really suggest it. Uh, really suggest you do so. So a really key message is that on results day, if somebody needs some help, actually mm -hmm. we very much swing into action okay. um, and you can get incredibly good outcomes, incredibly good outcomes. Um, one last thought. Now, here we go. Let me add this on um, we're getting lots of, of questions from people both of us i know we are saying um what do you think might happen with so and so which university do you think is most likely to be kind if i miss my grades etc 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 um i think we both feel terribly strongly actually in this very uncertain world the guy the past is no guide to the present you know how a particular university has behaved in the past who knows frankly yeah i think who knows? this year with, with um potentially international students deciding not to come um the whole situation is is much more fluid than we've been used to so it's very hard to predict the way universities will mm. respond um, in august but I'm pretty sure, I, I, in fact, I'm very sure that I have seen somewhere that if somebody has an offer and they've accepted their offer and they meet the terms of that offer, then that place is secure, isn't it? It is, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, it, that's a traditional arrangement from UCAS, absolutely, yeah. And, and that's exactly, and they've confirmed, haven't they, this year, that will that will still happen. Of course, yeah. And you'll you'll have an email confirmation of that on the thirteenth via track. Yeah, round about eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. The the so, precise timings are the results are released at eight. Track I think is going to be updated to correspond with that. But there's there has in the past often been a little mismatch between the release of results and track updating. So that's why I said by mid morning on the 13th. So to, to sort of give us a little bit of flexibility um, in terms of committing to times, um, we can say what Tormi's going to do, but what track does and what the universities do um, is obviously beyond our control. But we're all aiming for the early part of the morning of the 13th. Yeah. So and by um, that I mean one, onwards. one final message to the girls then so you and I seem to be spending our lives at the moment reading every word written on all of this so that we can give the best possible help to the girls um if any one of the girls obviously in talking to their unis or whatever gets any information then please 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 give that to us we're doing our absolute best but it may be that something somebody picks up is something yeah. that, that can help the Tommy community more generally so um and also if you've got any questions um that we haven't covered mm. in this in this broadcast girls please let us know and we can either respond to you individually or do another broadcast with um questions from the upper six we're very happy to do that yeah cool Excellent, Mr. Sykes. Well, right. I hope the Thank girls found so that useful. 
I've achieved my ambition to be a newsreader. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> There are some things it pays not to be too good at, because otherwise we'll be asking you to do this all the time. Right, thanks so much, Mr. Sykes. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Okay, bye-bye, girls. Bye, Mrs. Williams. Thank you. Bye.